Bless you. Welcome. tonight, Bishop Amos Live. Pleasure to be before you and the, the throne, our King, the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We appreciate your time that you have taken to be with us. May the Lord bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, our Father, we thank you for your blessing, for our life, health, and strength, for all that you've done, the ways that you've given us and the paths that you've opened the blessing that you bestowed on us and how you send the rain and how you allow us to grow in you and be kept by you. We pray that your blessing will continue to fall upon your people, open our hearts and minds and understanding that we may walk in the paths of righteousness. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Well, God bless you and greetings. Bishop Amos live tonight. We have a few things to talk about, amen, and I appreciate how the Lord has blessed us together to be able to say it's another day that the Lord has kept us. It's just another day, hallelujah, that the Lord has kept you. Greetings, Landmark and New Seasons, all the friends of the faith who watch with us tonight. I am uh, excited about the word of God, the times in which we live and the ability to ask men and women, boys and girls everywhere, submit your life to the Lord. Submit yourself to him. Turn everything over to Jesus and watch the Lord make a blessing out of your life. It's not hard to do, it's a decision to make and to say, I'll take Jesus for mine and that I will serve him for the balance of my days. I will serve him for the rest of my life. Once you make that commitment, he makes a commitment to you that certain blessings will flow and follow you wherever you go, that you will never falter, you will never fail. And he says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. So today, while we have things going on that may look like the end of the world, for some who are losing their lives in Ukraine and perhaps other places where they're in turmoil, it may be the end. But yet we know that our God is able. How many of you watched the President's State of the Union address the other day? Did you see that? Yeah, it was um, interesting. I thought it was well written. Powerful. You all do understand the president alone does not write his statement. It is his staff that puts together, but it's based on his own thoughts and what he has told them, hopefully, and what he has declared and decisions that he's made. 
some of them I think are excellent, such as the healthcare decision that anyone who tests positive for COVID can be treated on the spot. Amen. I think that's the way it should be. I think that is a good direction to go in. Somebody said, well, that's socialism. You, uh, yeah, it's, it's called being social. It's called being a neighbor. It's called helping somebody. So there's medication now that uh, helps a little more than 50% of the people who take it. There's no guarantee that it will keep you from getting worse or getting ill. But every step towards progress, every step towards uh, safety, every step towards a healthier population is worth the step. And so I applaud that effort, that scientific effort uh, that has been rendered. Now, when you look at all of these things and all of the uh, social agendas and all of the humanitarian efforts that were spoken of, the aid for uh, Ukraine and uh, benefits to senior citizens and to the poor, when you look at all of that, and it sounds wonderful, but it does mean that somebody must pay. I do like the idea that those that have more should pay more. To whom much is given, much is required. I haven't looked. I hope somebody's saying amen. I hope you wealthy followers of Bishop Amos Live are not hanging up on me. But it just makes sense that if God has blessed you more, the word says, if he has given to you, you ought to be willing to give back to the kingdom and to give back to the people who are in need. And so all of this sounds good, but uh, actually it's not new. The idea of support is not new. The idea of responsible giving is not new. It's, it's been written, it's been printed, it's been established in the word of God for a long time. And I'm going to read to you in the word of the Lord in the book of St. Mark, chapter 12, a statement by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. St. Mark, chapter 12, verse 14. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, let me, excuse me a minute, let me get it a little closer. Yes, when they will come, they send the master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he knowing their hypocrisy said unto them, why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it. And he said unto them, whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's, and they marveled at him. This statement rendered to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Is Jesus saying to them, separate God's business from man's business? If it's Caesar's money and Caesar asked for it, Give it to him. That's what paying taxes is all about. No point in you griping and complaining. Well, it just takes so much money out. After you've gone through all the legal, legal maneuvers, all the things that you can do to take care of your situation and to guarantee that you have enough to live on and you have exhausted all of your appeals, you know what you're going to do? You're going to pay those taxes. In fact, you're going to pay those taxes long before you have a chance to say no. It's deducted automatically for many of you that receive a W-2. is taken out in advance because you will render to Caesar things that are Caesar's. Amen? But also, not only do we give to Caesar, that is the government, the things of the world, 
God is saying through Jesus Christ, give God the things that are God's. Give him the things that are God's. Now, uh, it may sound like this is all about money, but that was not my initial thought, but it does come to mind now. We carry money that's God's. The tithe belongs to God. And he says, give God what's his. Yes, the government makes the money and the government owns the money and you use it to trade. Uh, you use it and gain it by work, way of work or labor or other means. And then you give it back in order to say, thank you for letting me use it. <laughs> thank you for letting me work, Mr. Governor. Thank you for letting me work, Mr. President and USA. Uh, uh, what do we call him? Uncle Sam. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Oh, thank you for the money you let me work for. Here, here's the part you want me to give back. And when you give back, that is his way of saying, every time you give back, I can recycle it and, and allow you some more. And if, if you don't work, if you don't give back, I'm going to stop you from receiving. That is the principle of human economics. If you quit giving back, then you're going to quit receiving. If you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, meaning if you don't provide back, you can't receive back. And Jesus says, I'm not getting into the politics of what you want to talk about. You want it simply to say, you can accuse me of saying, don't support Caesar, and therefore I am a threat. And now you want to rush the kingdom of God. But hold on, the kingdom of God's coming soon anyway. It's about to happen anyway. And all of you that are worried about the mark of the beast in the forehead and the hand, and is this mark of the beast is the mandatory vaccination signs of the mark of the beast don't worry the mark of the beast will come without you worrying about it the end will come without you fretting over it the end will come uh, and those that need to worry about the end are not those that are in christ <laughs> amen because you're going to give to Caesar what's Caesar. You're going to give to God what's God's, and God has a way of taking what's his. So yes, we carry uh, the wealth that he gives us, the provision God gives us, we carry about within ourselves, and we use it, we, we trade with it, we make a living with it. And he said, return unto me, and I will return unto you, and bring back the tithe. It's part of the circulation, it's part of the way God has ordained his ministries to work. So he gives to you, you give a part back to him. It supplies the ministry, which supplies you emotionally, spiritually. It supplies you with uh, moral direction and you grow and the church grows and you bring offerings on top of what he has given you because you are approaching God, you are asking God, petitioning God, and you are going to return unto him. Every time there was a petition for the priest, there would be an offering. Every time the angel of God would show up in the Old Testament, first thing they would do was offer something because I'm about to get something greater. It's part of the heavenly economics. You give and you receive. I don't know why people think they're supposed to receive and never give, receive and, and never offer. I was talking to a young minister the other day and he was asking, uh, not asking, he was stating he doesn't think he should be, he's going to pay reports this year. So much is going on and he said, I don't know and, and we're not meeting and I, I don't know if I should pay my national reports. I said, of course you should pay your report. You're a minister in the church of God in Christ. That comes with being a minister. You pay your assessment. You don't pay your assessment because you don't like what's happening. You wish you could redirect it and you want to be in charge. You're not in charge of that part, but you accepted that responsibility to carry the ministry of the church and the name of the church everywhere you go. And so you do what is assigned. Render to God what is God's. For every minister, that's your duty. That's your financial duty. It's your financial duty to support the national church, support your local church, support your jurisdiction. It's the way it's set up. That's what you got into. Amen? You don't want to pay reports. You shouldn't be in the organization. You don't want to re support financially. Then you, you don't want to be a part of the structure. But the structure requires your support. 
likewise in the local church. Why join an organization and you don't want to support the organization? I, I just come for the word. Yes, you come for the word. Well, carry your part of the burden in the process of word delivery. Elijah was a prophet and the people knew he was a prophet. They knew he was anointed. And one woman said to her husband, let's build a room for him on the house so he doesn't have to pass by and look for a place to stay. We want the word in our house. And they built a room and that became his stopover, his staying place. And they would offer him a meal and it had a bed and a table, a chair and a candlestick. It had everything that the traveling preacher needed. Why? Because she knew that she wanted the word of God in her house. The best way to get it is make room for it. And they spent whatever it took. You know the story as it would unwind he would speak a word of prophecy to her and she would have a son later that child would die but when that child died she was able to bring the promise back to life why because she had sown into the word and now the word was able to sow back into her so when we talk about rendering to caesar first thing people think about is the money the rendering the cost because the question was about the inscription should we pay taxes should we give back to caesar and jesus said you're trying to mix metaphors here you want to give to caesar give to caesar what caesar's but god demands something else he demands what he is not only the tithe and the offering how about you you said you belong to god if you belong to God, you need to get busy in the things that pertain to God. If you're not in a church, you need to be in a church. Upon this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church. He knew what church was. Don't come along in 2022 and try to redefine church. Well, church is a thought process. Church is just a spiritual place in your mind. No, it's in the congregation. It's in the dwelling. It's in the crowd. It was the church that God brought out of Egypt, and they were in congregation together and not only did the hebrew come out there were some egyptians that came out with them because they believed in the god of the hebrew and they joined the church while they were in the wilderness yes don't let people talk you out of the organized church i don't believe in the organized church what other kind of church is there it was a structure that was set up by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He tells Paul because the, uh, the church in Jerusalem was established based on the root of Moses and based on the old covenant and Jesus enters a new covenant and everything that we see in the book of the Hebrews and everything, most of what we see in those texts are related to the Hebrew faith related to their culture and their religion. He was speaking in terms that they would understand. But when it gets time to take the gospel to the next level and to the utmost parts of the world, he gives Paul this assignment. He tells him, go out and teach all nations. I want you to tell them the word of God. And he said, don't even bother them with all of the stuff of the Hebrew faith and the covenants, but deal with righteousness, abstention from idols and turning from the things that were of the world that God hates and teach them about Jesus Christ and teach them to love Jesus. And he, Paul taught them to give. He taught them to support. He taught them congregational worship. He taught them to belong to the household of faith. They were called the household of faith. Join the circle of believers. They didn't have a temple like the Hebrew did, like in Jerusalem, where they would worship. They didn't have the temple today, but what they did have, they had houses. And they went from house to house. They were breaking in bread, and they were meeting and praying and fasting and loving one another and encouraging one another the congregation grew because they rendered to God the things that were God's. And when there was a need for financial support, they sold all their goods. They sold it all and brought it together. They had the, the first biblical rummage sale. They sold stuff. I got a lamp I can sell. Well, here's a bed I don't need anymore. We're, gonna, we're raising money for the church. And they used it to take care of the ministry of the church. They brought it to the apostles' feet. They brought it 
and sat it at their feet and to the, to the leaders of the church and whatever they decided was the right thing to do with it, that's what happened. Because they knew that in the days of the new church, we've got to render to God the things that are God's. So when you see this, it's not only rendering their substance, they had to render their lives. What was the word said to us that we should present our bodies, what, a, a living sacrifice? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Once we come to Christ, we have to make him a presentation, a rendering. We have to turn something over to him. Have you turned your life over to him? Not just your name on the church roll. Have you really submitted your life to the Lord to say, Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want from me, I'm yours. I'm going to trust you, not only with tithe and offering. I'm going to trust you with everything that makes me me. I'm trusting you with my heart, with my humanity. I'm trusting you with my faith. And I'm going to live for you. I'm going to walk upright for you. I, I want to teach men and women what you say. I want to be yours. And the church believed it. The saints believed it. Those that came before us believed it. If church met on Tuesday and Friday and Sunday, they knew they were required to be there on Tuesday and Friday and on Sunday. Well, there was no option. You didn't have an option to say, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be there Sunday. I'm going to be there. And we were taught to say, if the Lord's will, the Lord's will, I will be there. The Lord's will, I'm going to be present. The Lord's will, I'm going to honor God. The Lord's will, I'm going to serve God. The Lord's will, I'm going to do the things that he would require me to do. Why? Because the church believed in God and believed in turning themselves over, making themselves his. They believed in dedicating their life to him completely. They believed that once you belong to God, everything about you, belongs to God. Once you belong to God, everything about you is his. Once you belong to God, everything about you must be turned over. Turn your life over to God. That means your thinking, your ways, your time, your behavior, all the other stuff in this world became secondary to the things of God. That's why our churches were full. People would tell their side organizations and other structures. That's my church night. I don't do anything on my church night because I belong to the church and we meet Tuesdays. I'll be there at 7.30. We meet Sunday nights. Can't you, let's just come over Sunday night. No, I'll be in church Sunday night. Well, didn't you go Sunday morning? Yeah, but my church meets on Sunday night. And you all know I'm telling the truth. That was the attitude of the saints. When did that change? When did it alter? When did people change their mind about rendering their lives to God? If there ever was an easier time to do it, it's today because the church doesn't demand as much of you as it did in the days of the former days. It doesn't demand as much of you in the time of your giving, in the time of your salvation. The church said, we're fasting, everybody fasted. But having a shut-in, you had to prepare for it. And you had to be responsible to give account if you've been absent. I know some of y'all been absent. I don't hear from you. And you hear from me every chance you want to hear from me because I'm preaching on Wednesday nights, Sunday morning, Sunday nights, prayers on Wednesday morning. You have an opportunity to receive from your church. Even though COVID may have cause a separation or a distancing physically. But even though you've had a chance to receive from the church, have you presented yourself available to the kingdom? Have you presented yourself available to the work of God? The word says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God, the things that are God's. What does he want from you? What does he require of man? What is the whole duty of man? You want to do the 
whole duty. Love God, fear God, and to love what God loves his people. Do your work. Present your bodies, a living sacrifice. It's a sacrifice because sometimes things you want to do, you don't do. Things you want to say, you don't say. Not because you can't, not because you're weak, not because you're a pushover. It's because, you know what? I belong to Christ. And in belonging to him, it changes my attitude, changes my actions, and it changes my behavior. Hallelujah. I belong to Christ. And as a result, I'm going to turn everything over to him and ask him to bless me. Now, there's a benefit because once you turn it over to him, it becomes his responsibility to take care of you, to maintain you. I love to hear the song uh, sung by Aretha Franklin, God will take care of you. And it is absolutely true. So when you have a problem with your body, problem in your head, eyes, ears, nose, throat, lungs, problem in your body, diseases come in, you can talk to the Lord about it. This body you gave me, I have turned it over to you, Lord. I've rendered to you. And I'm asking you to touch this body, bring healing, bring peace. And I trust you, you're going to do what's good for me. I trust you, you're going to give me a blessing. You're going to bless my home. Bless everything in it because the home is here. You gave it to me, but I'm here to give it back to you. I'm here because I love you. Amen, somebody. We have to trust in the Lord with all our mind, heart, soul, and strength. And watch God bless you for turning it back over to him. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Have you made that turn yet? I know you rendered to Caesar. You gave to Caesar. Some of you gave too much. Some of you gave more than was required. And if Caesar does right, he returns to you by way of that income tax check. Is Caesar fairer to us than God? Will God not restore? Will God not return? Will God not refresh and give us supply? Will he not fill our barrels? Will he not give us the strength that we need to undertake our day? I say that he will when we make up in our hearts and mind to render to him the things that are his. I'm challenging all of old landmark. Let's be present Sunday. Uh, arrange your affairs that you can be present at noon on Sunday. Whatever you got to do to do it, be there. Render to God the things that are God's. I'm calling on you to present yourself. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I, I was supposed to be somewhere else, but because I'm a human sacrifice, I'm coming to the altar. Hallelujah. Because I am a living sacrifice, I'm coming. Because the shepherd has called me, the, the pastor has called me to come. I'm coming to be there, to receive from the Lord. Wherever you are, come and be a part. Sunday, 12 noon, old landmark. And whoever you are, wherever you are, if you're not able to come, you can at least witness as much as you can the service. If you belong to a church, go to church when you're able to go. Because you've got to give back. You say, well, I give in many ways. You don't get to choose how you give. I know this world is so confused and it's hard to find somebody like me that'll just tell you the truth. You don't decide, well, I'm going to give to this agency and that's my tithe. That's not your tithe. Uh, I'm going to put a roof on a friend's house. That's my tithe. That's not your tithe. You gave to a friend what you wanted to give. You gave to an agency what you wanted to give. You gave to a club what you wanted to give, and that's your choice. There's nothing wrong with you doing what you want to do with what's yours, but you can't do it with what's God's. You got to put it at the apostles' feet. You got to bring it to church and present your tithe and your offering. Restore, he said, return unto me, that there may be meat in mine house. You bless somebody else's house, but you can't bless somebody else's house with what's God's. Isn't that obvious? 
tell you what, try this, brothers. Uh, you are Mr. Jones, and you have some little Joneses and a Mrs. Jones to take care of. But if you are sending your money to the Brown House, there's something wrong with that, isn't it? Oh, y'all might as well say amen. Let Mrs. Jones find out that you have been taking care of the Brown House and not the Jones House. You would meet some indignation, some anger, some consequences. And likewise, do you think God is not as even as fair or fairer? Perhaps you're living beneath your privilege because you have not rendered to God. I encourage everyone today, make a lifestyle change to where you are available to the Lord physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, resourcefully, and you are giving back to him as directed by the shepherd that he's put over your life. Lay your gift at his feet or her feet, whoever is your shepherd, and watch God bless you for being obedient to him. Watch God turn your life around as you do the work and as you follow the plan that he has set for you. Amen, somebody. May the Lord bless you. I want you to turn and render it to the Lord. I, I see so many are online and I thank you. If you have any comments or questions rather, amen, you can post it at this time. I want us all to get an understanding. So many of you have turned towards Christ in this latter day and you turn with foreknowledge. You watched mothers and fathers who were faithful to the Lord. You watched them give and maybe didn't even understand what they gave or why they gave, why they participated in ministry as well as they did, why they honored God as well as they did. Why was mama always getting ready for the next church service? Why did they start on Saturday night getting ready for Sunday? What was this that made them so obligated to the ministry? And they blamed the preacher. That, that preacher has deceived them. He put uh, something in their heart, in their mind. He's, he's making abuse. He's taking advantage of. They said all kinds of negative things, but they didn't know the word of God. But then once you get touched by the word of God, it makes you want to do more. It makes you want to make a commitment. It forces you to bring a change in your life. And I know you said it didn't take all that, but now you're doing all that and some more. <laughs> Why? Because you came to the realization it was yours to render to God. It was yours to give back to God. God bless you each. I see you, Sister Bertie Ross, my dear cousin and missionary. Thank God for you, Brother Jamar, Sister Gloria Smith. Thank you, Sister Gloria. Amen. Deacon uh, Williams. Amen. Sister Abby. Sister Brenda. God bless you. Amen. Brother Luther, Deacon Luther, thank you. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Johnsons. Amen. Appreciate your faithfulness, Sister Stevens. God bless you. So glad to see so many of y'all listening. First Lady Amos is there. God bless my beloved wife too. Amen. And each of these, remember, ours is to give back to God. There was a song we used to sing that I belong to God. I belong to God. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I belong to God. <laughs> and when you really get that in your mind, it's not just a melody, but it is also a principle. I belong to God. From the crown of my head hmm, to the sole of my feet, I belong to God. And it's time now as we return to the sanctuary, start getting in your mind, get your agenda together as we return and the schedule will develop more than just on the uh, once or twice Sunday, we are going to start stepping some things up, but you got to speak for your home, speak for your family, speak for all those under your roof. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. If I am covering you, if I am feeding you, if I am providing for you, you don't have to love God, but you're going to come to church because <laughs> I'm going to do all I can to get God in you, to get the word of God on you, to make you love what Jesus loved and what God loved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. The son loved the world so much he gave his life. Hallelujah. 
and his life causes us to live. Why? Because we know what it means to render unto God the things that are God's. And so I ask each of you to turn your life over to the Lord. Make yourself available to the church. Make yourself available to the work of church. Make this commitment. When church doors open fully, I'm going to be a full member. Not a show up sometime. Not a part time, not a every now and then, not of when there's good days, but not bad days, not if it rains, uh, will I come, will I stay? Oh no, but you got, can't be a fair weather member. You got to be the one that makes a commitment to the Lord. Peter and John were going to the temple, and it was the hour of prayer because they had made a lifestyle promise and a lifestyle practice of keeping the traditions of their fathers, keeping the prayer wheel turning, keeping prayer alive in their mind, soul, and strength, keeping the prayer going in their hearts and in their spirits, and making sure their home was a home of prayer. Because what the church taught you was not just to pray at church, but men ought always to pray and not to faint. So you had a morning prayer, you had a midday prayer, an evening prayer, and all prayers did not take place in the church. Some of them took place at home. We were taught to go into the secret closet and pray when you need a real close touch with God. I meant get away and go somewhere where you can't be bothered, where they can't even find you. Tell God all about it. Church teaches you how to have a quality life, how to have a life committed to the Lord, rendered. Out of render comes surrender. Out of the word render is ren, tear. Tear yourself away from your worldly lifestyle and present yourself to God. Tear yourself away, rend yourself from the things that displease God. And say, because I love God, because I'm his. My home is his, my car is his, and everything that belongs to God serves God. He has given me means to live, and I'm going to turn some of this back over to him as taught in the word. And then he's going to give me more. I'm going to sow seeds and he's going to allow me to have bread to eat and seed to sow. And as I sow the seed, I will see great blessings come up for me. This is nothing new, but this is the teaching that brought us thus far. We thank God for you. And I thank you for listening tonight, Bishop Amos Live. I'm calling a revival calling a revival of the mind, soul, and strength, that we will do the things we were taught to do. And as we see the day of the Lord approaching, we don't do them less, but we do them even more. When we know that we're living in the evil days, we ought to be rushing to the ways the word says to us to remove not the old landmark. And we should walk in them. And there was a group that said, we will not, no, we're not doing that. But we are called to the righteousness of the word of God. And there's no new church. There is no new understanding. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. The same word that was preached is preached even greater now and should be preached even louder and with greater understanding because we know who he is. We've been able to get something that others didn't have. And that's truth and understanding and power to believe and power to act on his behalf. Blown to God, tear yourself away, render to God. Render, tear yourself. I, well, I'm busy on Tuesdays. Tear yourself away if that's your service night on Wednesdays, whatever day it is, Sunday morning. Tear yourself away, render. Girl, where you going on Saturday night? You leaving early? I'm leaving early because I owe God and that place I must present tomorrow. And that is with the household of faith. Make it your practice like your ancestors did. Make it your tradition like your ancestors did. Make up your mind that once you are his, there's no going back. Somebody say there's no going back. There's no going back. No matter what come or go, 
I'm going to stay with the love of Jesus because he taught me to render to God the things that are God's. God bless you. I'm going to stop. I'm never finished. Y'all know that. I'm never, never, I'm never finished. I'll just stop right now and take it up at a later time. I'd like for each of you to give the Lord an offering tonight. This is our worship service Sunday night for Old Landmark Church and friends, as well as those that follow the Elton Amos Ministries. Bishop Amos Live is a part of that. And I want you to commit yourself to doing something for God, amen, for the kingdom, amen, on Sunday, the third Sunday in this month, we'll meet at 12 noon. Amen. start getting yourself together now. You got two weeks to prepare yourself to be there on the third Sunday service at Old Landmark at noon. If you come flying in, fly in. If you're driving in, drive in. I'm not going to tell anybody you're too far to come. If the Lord puts on your heart to be there, you ought to come and be there because that means he has a blessing in store for you. Amen. Call it our own personal convocation. I'm asking all the saints to convocate with me on the third Sunday in the month of March. God bless you. Render your offerings to the Lord. Amen. The giving instructions are clear. You're going to give by Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. Amen. And you can make your donations there on the app. Amen. Or by Old Landmarks, Cash App, dollar sign, Old Landmark. Or you may give to P.O. Box 12641, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46864. Praise God. And everybody that can do something to the glory of God to bless the kingdom. We're praying for you. Praying for your healing. Praying for your strength praying for your peace, praying that the power of God continue to lift you and dwell on you. If you haven't been doing what you should be doing, start now. Don't wait. Start now. Make a commitment to the Lord. Now, from this day forward, I'm going to render myself to God and to the things of God. I I've lived the balance of my days. The majority of my days are behind me. And for many of you, the majority of your days, realistically, I'm not preaching doom or prophesying destruction, but you're already 50 something. You likely have the majority of your days behind you. Amen. And some are 40. But even if you have another 40, that's 80. And, and look at your family tree uh, by reason of health, strength and lifestyle. Uh, many of us, the Lord said 70 promises three score and 10. Amen. So if you're over 35, it is possible that the majority of your days are behind you. Just real talk. But what are you going to do with the rest? Yes, you did some good things in the first 35. But now it's time to step up. Be accountable unto God, whose father is yours. God is your father. You are his sheep. You're the sheep of his pasture, his pasture. And you're going to do what's right by God. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, your home, your families. And say, as the prophet said, and the people said, as for me and my house, this is, this is it. I'm, we're going to serve the Lord. And I'm not responsible for every individual's choices in my house. But the household is and has been rendered to God. God bless you. I believe this uh, should bless somebody and should have helped somebody. You should know for now that you have turned your life over to God. No matter what's going on, trust in the Lord. Believe God for all things. Watch God be a blessing in your life. I love you. This is Bishop Amos. Ask you to join me in prayer at 5.30 Wednesday morning. Amen. And Elder Gaston, Minister Eubank, Minister Franks, and others will be there. Come on and let's pray. Don't worry about it. Believe God. Love you. See you Wednesday morning.